With the final assembly of our 1971 Super Beetle more or less complete, we can now start to iron out some of the wrinkles that we mentioned in our rear end wrap-up video. The most important one being that our rear end is just too low. As we mentioned in our last video, we really should have dropped the car down to the ground after the engine was installed. That way, we could have checked the ride height and adjusted the spring plates before we installed the rear fenders. We got a little bit excited about nearing the end of our project though, and didn't take the time, so now we have to pay for that mistake now. We measure and decide that we want to lift the back end of the car about two and a half inches. So we jack up the back end of the car, pull off the wheels, unbolt the back bolts on the running boards, the first three fender bolts come out, and we can pull apart and reset the rear spring plates, and we can reassemble the back of the car. Since the left side of the car typically sits lower than the right side, we ended up adjusting the rear torsion bars differently. On the left side, we adjusted on an inner spline to lift the rear left about 2.6 inches, and on the right side, we went up one outer spline to lift the right side up about 2.35 inches. Once both sides of the suspension are adjusted, we can set the rear end back down, and we can drive the car back and forth so the rear suspension will settle. While we're driving the car back and forth, we can make certain that it's tracking straight so that we can finally permanently bolt on the steering wheel, making sure that it sits level across the dash. While we were driving back and forth, a small oil leak that we'd noticed earlier from the oil filter exposed itself as a large oil leak. We actually swapped our filters when we were adjusting the suspension, trying to take care of the oil leak, and we also checked and rechecked all of our oil lines. After pulling out our hair, scratching our heads, and basically being completely baffled, we felt the top of the filter housing, and lo and behold, we found a puddle of oil. We pulled the mount off, and with the engine running, we could see that the oil was leaking from the casting of the oil filter housing. A new housing is swapped in, and we no longer have an oil leak. Then we got to work diagnosing the hesitation sputtering from the carburetor. Like we suspected, our fuel pressure was too high. It was actually at 6 PSI, which is way too high for this carburetor. After several attempts to drop the pressure with different gaskets and even different fuel pump drive rods, we ended up swapping in a new fuel pump and we ended up with a total of four gaskets to get our fuel pressure down to about 2 PSI, which solved our problems. The additional runtime while we were adjusting our fuel pressure revealed that our valve covers were leaking a little bit too much to our liking. So, after swapping in new gaskets didn't solve the issue, we installed a pair of bolt-on valve covers which have no problem clearing our ratio rockers and seem to have solved the problem. So, with all the issues that we've found so far ironed out, we can take a quick drive around our complex. As we pull back to the shop, other than having the front tire scrubbing a little bit while turning and the front spoiler scraping on anything that pretty much resembles a dip, we're very happy with the way the car drives. Thanks for watching. Please click the like button, subscribe to our channel if you don't already, let us know if you have any questions in the comments below, and when you need parts for your vintage Volkswagen, head on over to jbugs.com.